What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, it seems as if the guys behind the wheel of these movies and these announcements and these, you know, the producers and everybody moving and, and, and shaking and making things happen have come to the realization that they really can't deliver on in some of these films. All these announcements that you've heard about certain films, and now there's rumors of possible MCU films being canceled. So far, Sony has outright canceled it, and they should have canceled the day it was announced. We knew what that was. Yeah. Brian, what are some of the uh, rumors of the, or things that you've heard regarding the MCU films? Uh, some of the some of the movies that have been uh, rumored to be canceled. Well, we'll or debate the possibility. Yeah. So we'll debate what has been canceled. The yes. rumor is two pictures from the scheduled slate, which we did not ever get the full reveal. Remember, we saw there were empty slots in Phase Six in particular mm -hmm. when Kevin <clears throat> went up before Comic Con. I guess it was last year. So. The rumor is two pictures have been removed from the MCU calendar, not to be replaced. Uh, and then as you're referencing, um, Sony has pulled, I think it's the El Muerto the bad, that was starring Bad Bunny. That, that picture has also been pulled. Um, you know, some of that on the MCU side, no doubt traces back to Bob Iger saying they needed to slow down. We knew when he said that they didn't just mean stretching out the timeline. Some of the things had to go away. We did like a whole yeah. thing about some of the shows, like cancel, you know, convert, do all that stuff. So then the question, I do not believe, and I've not seen any reports that they are canceling anything that has been formally announced okay. on the calendar. So I do not believe, so something like Blade, which we think is in real trouble. And I've said... I don't think this is going to make it. So that could still happen. That could still be canceled, but I don't think that's one of the two. I think the two pictures that have been removed are pictures that they never formally declared, which leads to, or scheduled. Sorry, not they might have mentioned it, but never formally put it on the Because everything else has a date, right? So like everything that they just delayed, those all have specific dates. So I don't think it's any. Tracy gave me an interesting name, but go ahead. So you threw out one, which I agree with. Because this Armor is the Wars, right? yes, because that's a project that started as a show. It changed to a film because they basically were like, we couldn't figure it out as a show, and then they tried to sell us that oh, it has to be so big. And I agree with you. I think that one is one of the two that has been wiped. Yeah. What do you, I speculated? Eternals two was the was maybe the other one, just because box office wise it was not successful. They had problems with Chloe Zhao, especially in post-production. And I could see Bob Iger basically saying, no. Like, if you want these characters to live on in other projects, fine. But there's just nothing, there's no justification yeah. for doing another one of these. That's my other theory. I could find justification for making an Eternals too, but... Another film that has a two at the end of it, Shang-Chi. Tracy says Shang-Chi. I said, you know what? Shang-Chi, I don't know why they would bring that one back. Certainly people loved it. But what is the reason for bringing that character back? Really, there is no reason right now, Brian. I don't see a reason to have that character back. How much money did it make in the, in the, the box office? Did it do well? I think it was like six hundred. No, so it made like four fifty. But remember, like, ah. the, but remember, theaters were half open, so it was viewed as a success okay. relative to the capacity of, of movies at the time. It's still far, it's still the best reviewed film, not named No Way Home, in the post Avengers era. Mm -hmm. I think like I like it better than you. I like I showed it to my kid the other day. She really liked it. I think it does hold up. I think the problem is the problem is twofold. The number one problem, like you said, is they the, the cliff like right, the credit scene. Like, where does that go? Right, we, we just they, we've, we've nothing has furthered. We have no idea. Nothing yeah, yeah. has furthered that beacon 
into space that they mention in that scene. Almost none of them have further anything in right. terms of the, none of the end credits for these movies have meant anything. So that one, though, so it's interesting. Like that one at least had a story element, right? The beacon. What does that say? Yes. As opposed to, hey, here's Clea. Hey, here's Hercules. That one at least was so clearly pointing at a story they had in mind. But there's been nothing to push that to forward. And the this. problem, and I actually, I I was interested by the whole, you know, the sister taking over the Ten Rings in the after credit scene, which I was like, okay, they, they've thought about some ideas that I actually do want to see. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, like, they've then just left the entire Shang-Chi world on the shelf. Yeah. Which is kind of unmarvel like there's, that, that there's been no connectivity to anything involving Shang-Chi or anything involving Talo or anything. Ten Rings, nothing. Like none of the other projects referenced it, even though it was successful, which now makes it harder to find the entry point for like, well, what is what brings him to in contact with the other heroes? Well, such as there are. Yeah. The other thing that I think is a problem is, look, it, it, we, it's long since forgotten, but we talked about it at the time. It's 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 the whole Simu Lu China thing. Like, you know, that's kind of been forgotten in the wake of things like Ezra Miller and all these other things. But, you know, the Chinese box office has been really problematic for U.S. movies post-pandemic. The Chinese audience is just not coming out to support these films in any way near what they used to even transformers mm -hmm. which which used to be like money in the bank like that is there it's like probably the second it's probably the third largest market that the movie's going to have but it's a fraction of what the michael bay movies used to draw over there. yeah yeah so that then goes to like how does disney want to approach that is is rehabbing their image in china a priority well if it is then the simu lu comments and all that sort of stuff will matter a lot as we talked about at the time um certainly so they might be stuck with like uh we we, uh, we 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 also discussed the possibility of having to did we i think we did in terms of if simulu can't play ball doesn't refuse to walk back things you know what i'm saying and do do they recast him i mean so the short answer is they can recast anybody um, Certainly. The other part of this is like, you know, I don't know Simu Lu personally, but like he he definitely is a pretty outspoken individual. If you look at his track record on King's Convenience, where he really got into a pretty high profile tussle with the show's creators. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you look at sort of he's not afraid to speak his piece about China, uh, which he has every right to do. I don't have any Certainly. I don't have any problem with his right to do that. Yeah. I'm simply saying as an artist, he does strike me as the kind of guy who I could almost see walking away from this as well. Let's not view this as a one-way street. I could see Certainly. him saying, like, I am only going to do this a certain way. And if I have to be stifled on certain things, I'm not going to stand for that. So It's quite possible, Brian, that he may he may not want to come back because everybody else is abandoning him. Why not him? So I just he's feel doing, like... And he's yeah. doing big things, too. And I feel like... Yeah, I mean, he's about to be one of the co-leads in the Barbie movie, which I know sounds wild, but like his profile is still there to where he has stuff to fall back on. Yeah. Then you have Destin Cretton, who is certainly like a pers a favored person among Marvel because of that movie. He obviously was handed... Nobody... You know, the problems with Kang Dynasty don't seem to relate to him yet. Um, but he's a talented director. He's a guy who can yeah. get work and he can get mm -hmm. all kinds of work elsewhere off of his work on Shang-Chi. Is he going to just wait around indefinitely to do the sequel? I don't know. So they've put this character in limbo to where, like, if they do bring it back, it's not nearly as beloved as, like, Guardians, which wound up being how many years between two and three? That was a long time. It still did well, but it was like, it was a long time that we... Mm -hmm. So... Shang-Chi didn't have like the the brand to be like, we can go eight years without a Shang-Chi movie and we're excited <laughs> yeah. to see the follow-up. Yeah. So I don't I just don't know where he ends up. He needs to be in another project that's not his own movie before he comes back, I think. Yeah. A lot of issues there, man. And I think there's more cancellations coming. This is to your point about Blade. I, I think like that could still happen. I, I think so too. Uh how, um, what's that that show? Iron Heart. Yes. You think that gets canceled? No. Why not? 
because of who's behind it and what else is invo- what else is entailed with canceling that show. No, certainly, certainly. They, they saw what happened to Zaslav publicly. I don't think they're about to. You know, I mean, Diz- Disney's making a lot of changes, right? Like, let's let's link that in here, right? CFO out, Chief Diversity Officer out, Victoria Alonso out. Bob Iger is making changes, so yeah. stuff's going to change. But they there's obviously a in a there's obviously certain things they're going to want to try to preserve along the way and ryan coogler in fairness right i don't think they want to cross ryan coogler that's probably not the no. guy creatively that you want to mess with right now you give him, canceling you give ironheart him, would do that you give him the keys yeah. you give him the keys because he, he he believes in quality and, and, and the story and all that stuff so he's done a fantastic job for them I don't know that people uh, are super excited for that show. If I'm being fair, like oh I, no, no, certainly not, you know, certainly not. Let's see if he could pull out a miracle with that because for me right now, we we already know what it is. Yeah, uh, she wasn't well received in Black Panther, so let's see. It's been real quiet. It's been real quiet. See, I think uh, and I, I don't think it's her fault. I think this no, is certainly it, it isn't. I just think. As I said at the time, I think it's like they chose the wrong character to bring into the universe. Like, I oh, they gave her too much to do in that. That movie. for sure. But I just think like the the memory of Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man was too fresh in everyone's mind for people to accept this character as I the next gen me. version of that. I just think they're gonna look at this character and they're gonna see RDJ in the background the whole time. And it's it's not Riri Williams' fault or Dominic Thorne's fault. It's just that's how it is that's the mcu storytelling fault those people exactly. that wrote that wrote this they wrote it this way they gave her too much to do they put her in a suit right away we didn't care at least start the the the, the intention of her wanting to build something and then think about how you're gonna do it but don't just throw her in there and and it looks crazy yo it looks crazy brian uh any other movies you think that that, that 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 that's a possibility of being thrown out? On the uh, end, well, I mean, the big elephant in the room is: Do I feel like every news item that goes by, do we get to Secret Wars? That's the one to me. It's like I don't know. Like to me, it's like you can't. we've gone this long without Avengers movies. If you don't, if you aren't ready to put out an Avengers movie. Cancel the Avengers movies you have until you're ready. Oh my god! I would, yeah, man. You you can't do a Secret Wars or even you can't do an Avengers film. Period. With the lineup you got there now, no. If you attempt, you will be disappointed, and somebody's gonna. And it will do more damage. It will do more damage to put out a poor, like I said, you put out a Justice League box office level Avengers movie. You're not getting to make the next one. No, absolutely not. Brian El Muerto, someone who I'd never heard before. But if you figure you have over 900 characters, how much, how many, how many of the characters they got? 900, you got the number right. The spider the spider universe. <laughs> you, who knows what, what characters are out there? But Brian, this is, this is exactly what we're afraid of. We're getting a Craven that I don't know what the hell we're going to get with that. It, it's, we already were right on, we were not going to get. That craven with the Russian accent and a grizzled and more mature look. We got this young guy speaking English and whatever. We'll yeah. see what that is. El Muerto, yo, like really, yo. We know Bad Bunny is the, one of the biggest stars in the world. Yep. But you can't convince me of anything. That the only reason that you're doing this movie is because Bad Bunny. That's it. Not El Muerto. You're not you're not trying to give me a dope El Muerto movie. You're trying to give me Bad Bunny in the mall in the MCU, yo. Perhaps we not not even perhaps. He's one of Spider-Man's foes, but who wants to see El Muerto against Spider-Man? It's like 
These villains aren't villains anymore, Brian. They have their own movies. The only villain that's supposed to have his own movie is Doom. That's it. You given... Even though Morbius is not a villain per se, but Craven. And it, it, the fact that you even mention El Muerto, it, it's just, it's just, it's just, this is one of the reasons why I don't really care for any of the Sony, any of Sony's movies in the MCU or with their characters. I just don't care for any of it because I know what it is. Everybody knows what it is. Yeah, well, I mean, this and, is, yeah, right. Like this is the problem, but this is the problem when Joker makes a billion dollars and Venom makes eight hundred. His studios yeah. copycat each other, and they see historical villains in their own movies making a lot of bank, and they immediately go to the catalog and say, "Aha, <laughs> we don't need the hero." That is can, true. You know, and that's you know, and then. You, then you get the the lineup we had. Now, the, I went back. It was inter- the El Morto project. I think it was interesting. It must not have gone anywhere because I couldn't find anything in the rumor mill about you know writers supporting cat. I, I don't think this project ever really got that far off the green light. This is El Morto was an announcement similar to Blade. Only Blade got a little further. Yeah, and I think also. At the time, there was a lot of fanfare around this being like the first Latino sort of centric. And like, quite honestly, Blue Beetle beat them to the finish line. Exactly. A lot of it is, Brian, I think a lot of it also has to do with, if you think about it, these guys are thinking about what haven't they done that we can beat them to. Yeah, sure. Aquaman. Look at it. made a billion dollars. Yeah. Um Blue Beetle. I mean, they're 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 going, they're doing stuff. They're looking at all the possibilities of where they can compete and take advantage of where MCU hasn't really uh, done anything with a specific archetype or character. So it'll. It, it, I just Sony is going to continue doing what they're doing, especially because they got Spider Man. And Miles Morales, that will that will be Brian the 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 I've had it up to here, or continue doing what you're doing, right? Yeah, I mean, I think if El Muerto was going to be resurrected, it will be resurrected on Amazon because. But the I'm just saying the value to Amazon is not all in quality. They are trying to develop superhero IP and they're trying to do it right now in part through the Sony catalog and in part through the DC catalog that they've purchased. So to them, El Muerto might be something they're willing to lose money on just to have more of a catalog as a TV show. Got it. But Sony, the studio, when you look at the way the the wind is blowing on superhero box office right now, they couldn't afford to take that chance and say, hey, Bad Bunny, here's a $125, $150 million budget when (laughs) Flash might not even make three hundred dollars at the bottom, right? So that's what you... I think that's what you're seeing. I I would say there's like a 5% chance this project lives again on Amazon. I just don't know if Bad Bunny will be the star of it if it's a TV show. Because I think he signed up for to be a movie. Certainly. Certainly, because he's a big deal. He's a big deal. Right. Uh... Yeah, let us know in the comment section below. I mean, this is the first time we get we start hearing about actual superhero movie cancellations, Brian. First it was delays. Now there are cancellations. Then there will be, we're taking a break. Yeah, well, that's I think, what that's what's yeah. gonna happen next. I think what needs to stop is this whole like what you know what Marvel popularized, this whole like, here's the phase. And here's the multi-year calendar. I think the studios are finding out we can't promise that anymore because the audience just isn't reliably there for us to say we're going to do these six movies over the next three years. I was hoping, Brian, that at some point Marvel will say we're going to stop doing phases and we're just going to start doing movies. We're going to stop telling these storylines that, you know, and just 
do these storylines from the comic books, right? Because that's what worked. You had an idea that at the end game, you had nothing, you had no idea what you want to do, really. All you knew is that you had to do something to be able to do whatever you want. And you opened up the multiverse and now look where it got you. Yeah, well, I think there's definitely, you know, there's definitely arrogance on on some of this, right? There's when you look at the VFX issues, when you look at some of the storytelling and some of the TV shows in particular, but now even the movies, they definitely were feeling themselves. They definitely got to a stage where they basically were like, we can put the Marvel Studios logo at the front of a project and people will show up no matter what it is. Yeah. And the audience called them on it. Yeah. yeah. And said no. Do you also want to add um, the Spider-Verse working conditions? We mentioned the Flash box office um, <laughs> and how much is going to oh, make. Oh. I'm telling you, they try to get us with the banana in the tailpipe and it did not work. I tell you it what, it did not you, work. If you are able to surpass Morbius in futility, you are in some <laughs> anti-elite company because the 75% drop weekend one to weekend two was the biggest we have seen for a movie in this genre. And Morbius was the only one close at 74. That wow. is abysmal. 50 is the benchmark for like a, a blockbuster. 60 is livable. 75 means no word of mouth. Cinema score was B. No buzz. People couldn't wait to get to whatever was on the calendar, which, by the way, wasn't a lot. They were, what, we, what they went back to see was more Spider-Verse, which continues to do well. And even like, you know, Jennifer Lawrence's new comedy, No Hard Feelings, went to see that. Transformers, like, they went to see anything but the, flash, <laughs> the second week. And, and that just, oh man, it's, again, listen to our show regarding The Flash in terms of what we think transpires because some of the words or the comments that we got regarding The Flash, you know, didn't seem believable. Although throughout that time before the movie came out, there wasn't, there, there weren't any bad reviews, but after seeing it, I don't know. You have to wonder. Can we trust David Sasloff to say, oh, this is amazing? Well, obviously not. I don't know. I mean, Black Adam and no, the Flash. Right? I don't think I need a third. I don't think I need a third review from him. I don't want to hear him say, yeah, I don't want to hear him say anything about movies, B. Nothing. Um, but the Spider-Verse working conditions, Brian, is spreading. What we're hearing here is the methodology that Lord and Miller were using and asking of the animators was effectively like too difficult or too unusual relative to movies of this genre to where like the animators were being asked to produce like unrealistic results along the way for those two to kind of review and sign off on. Look, I have, that's like a he said, she said type of um, situation that I can't, I know nothing about since I don't, yeah. I don't do that. But it is interesting that with this movie, you know, having far surpassed the first financially and obviously setting up, there'll be huge demand for a third one. It now looks like there'll be something of a collision course between the creators and the people who actually physically have to make this possible. So I don't know how it gets resolved. I assume it will be a check or a checkbook or some kind of negotiation of some kind. But it kind of just feels like, you know, we, right now we have a lot of work stoppages in Hollywood, right? We have a writer strike, which a lot of basically has to do with the streaming era and how to compensate for it. We avoided a director strike narrowly this week. Mm -hmm. We are facing a potential actor strike literally within Which a week. Which I have to get your take because I had a conversation with Tracy regarding the actor strike and what he's trying to find out what is it that they want and how can they get what they want in a streaming era. It's difficult to, to try to justify whatever it is that they want, but what is it that they want? Correct. So I think that's fair. But when I see what it looks like to me on the VFX front is there needs to be, we're heading towards some kind of negotiation around the working conditions, the calendar, the time commitment and the pay that is necessary for these projects to kind of meet the, the animators in the middle. Because if you have yeah complaints about all of you know it's marvel it's dc all the places that basically are generating the most work for vfx if everyone's complaining about all of them 
to me, that just means, right, they're going to walk out at some point and say, look, we're, we're not going to make you, we're not going to provide the work for your next movie unless you give us X, Y, and Z assurances. I don't see any way around that. So with the way we are in Hollywood right now, I don't know, I don't know that the animators have their own union. I don't believe they do. But that might be a step that's coming where yeah, it's like, certainly. right? So, so it doesn't feel like this, we've heard the end. If we were getting complaints about bad VFX from Marvel, now we're getting complaints about good VFX outcomes in Spider-Verse. But, to, but, but being to, 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 to deliver. Uh, and and that's, that's the problem. Uh, and, and because for MCU, VFX guys were complaining and other people that I know were complaining and and, and now is just uh, coming to a point where are we going to get even you know what Brian it's crazy we were talking about all the content that we're going to get oh, yeah. <laughs> and now it's like 2024 it, 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 it seems like what what kind of content are we going to get because how long is this going to last yeah well we clearly found we clearly found the bridge too far right we clearly yeah. found the limit of what the industry could sort of absorb right i mean yeah there were shows that were made that would never have been greenlit you know 20 30 years ago and it seems like well i don't think we'll go all the way back to you know the days of four networks and you know a handful of studios but like we're clearly going to settle in a, in a middle ground that hopefully is better quality for us i don't mind i mean it was like for for a moment it seemed like if we were excited about all the content because we thought it was going to be comparable to what we were getting from like infinity war and endgame when we started to see consistently that like it was eight notches below that <laughs> we're all for scaling it back because we'd much rather have the things we get be excellent than just be yeah. inundated with mediocrity but what about the acting brian the the, the actors what what do you what do you see them working out well it's not as clear to me what the i mean uh, what the uh, i haven't paid as much attention to like what exactly their issue is the writer is much more clear mm -hmm. um or at least i don't know how you solve it but the the issue is clear the, the issue is mm -hmm. clear is that in a streaming era it is impossible because the metrics of streaming are unreliable it is impossible for the writers and the studios to agree on what the writing is worth because they can't they can't say like well how many minutes were how many minutes were really what was the audience really for this show if only netflix knows that and they're in control of those metrics how how are those metrics reliable to get the writers paid what they need to get paid that i would and, I, I i would assume brian that that money would uh, a, a percentage uh, of their subscribers uh, fee we, or I, I would expect that we're going to probably get another hike and some of that money is going to be given to them and it's all depending on certain metrics like as you say uh, but those uh, metrics have determined. to be third but those metrics have to be unilaterally accepted right it'd be no different yes. than like if all box office and all tv ratings were only supplied by the studios themselves why would we believe that because they would just doctor yeah. the numbers to make sure they were paying as little as possible yeah, but because sure. Nielsen, because because you know, with box office, you, the, the theaters themselves can count the tickets yeah. and count the dollars. There was an objective measure of how much was mm -hmm. being made, and therefore you could compute back ends off that. You don't have that in streaming yeah, right now. Yeah, you just yeah, don't. Yeah. And so that yeah. I think is a big issue they're yeah. they're trying to solve. And the directors were similarly looking for bigger cuts. I think of like global streaming. Uh, residuals that was a big thing they wanted uh, mm -hmm. because global streaming is still growing in a way that like you know even some of the domestic services have have already been entrenched so i would imagine the actors are looking for the same like they want higher floors for the projects they're involved in but you know until we get to a place where we can measure all this stuff mm -hmm. accurately and consistently i don't know what the great answer is so uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Um, it's, it's crazy. Just, just so many bad news situations that are occurring all at the same time. Uh, and it's, it's, it's tough to wrap your head around all these things because we're talking about all the bad stuff and not talking about 
what we're excited to see or can't wait to see is, 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 is you know, it sucks. But let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes-